Nice, you good? Yes, 10-0. Hello and welcome to Fort William. My name is Henry and I'm here with Pink Bike Racing. Now we're gonna race the World Cups with some of the world's biggest mugs. Although speaking of which, I'm not quite sure what Catho is up to at the moment. So over the course of the today, I'm gonna be jumping in there to fix some bikes and jumping out again to try and find some of the latest new bikes that are breaking cover at this weekend's World Cup. So let's take a nosy around the pits and see what we find. Oh, watch out. Watch out. So we're here with the GT pits and they have what we can probably assume is the new Fury. Now the last version of the Fury was one of the new wave of downhill bikes with a mid-high or high pivot and they incorporated an idler to let them run that system. This bike looks to be going in a similar direction but it has got some important differences. So first up, the linkage actually runs internal of the struts of the seat post now as opposed to having plates outside. It does still look to have adjustable rear end, and I imagine it's probably kind of rectified some of the geometry outliers of the previous Fury. Off the top of my head, I think the stack on a size large was under 600 mil, so it was really low, it was about that. This one looks to be a bit higher. What that's gonna do is gonna let your head be a bit higher and put more weight through your feet which on steep tracks is definitely a good thing. The bike also has some other features which are gonna make it really suitable for racing. Most notably, that cable routing which comes into the top tube, which is gonna work really well with number boards. So we're just outside the intense pits with a small update. So last time at Lords, they had that wild prototype bike and they continued to do some testing over that weekend with various linkages. Some of those linkages looked a bit, hmm, first generation iPod, but apparently they've got some new ones which are looking far more refined. Sadly, we can't get a peek at them, but they will be about being raced this weekend. So at Lords again, we saw some new things breaking cover. Most notably, what looks to be kind of a reset of RockShox's gravity hardware and forks. So there is a new shock and there is a new boxer. Both look very different architecturally from their previous versions. So the fork is definitely bigger in terms of its leg diameter and the shock, the orientation of all the dials and stuff mean that it definitely is a new shock. What is going on inside, obviously, I can't say. Although I've heard rumors that the new damper in that boxer has a coil sprung IFP. So when you have a fork or any type of damper that uses a closed system, you need something to be able to handle the oil displacement. Now before, on the previous version of the Boxer, it uses RockShox's charger system. Now that is a bladder that can expand slightly as that column of oil is pushed through the valves. However, they look to be going to a coil sprung IFP. So there's literally a coil spring in there to handle that displacement. Now this isn't dissimilar from what Fox are doing with their Grip 2 damper, and also Suntour, I'm pretty sure, have a similar system. Now the reason they don't run this system, or the drawbacks of it, are potentially weight, but in a downhill fork, obviously it's not so important. I can't imagine it's gonna to be too long until we have the full release of these forks, because they've been kicking about for a while. Hold it together, hold it together, Ron. <laughs> so we're here with the 555 Racing and they are running frames from RAW. Now these frames are pretty far along in their journey of prototyping and have some really cool features. The main name in the game seems to be adjustability. So you can adjust reach and head angle, you can adjust progression and BB height as well as chainstay length. I have to say the BB adjustment as well as the progression is the thing that really catches my eye because I think it's a really smart execution. It almost looks modular in its design and it actually says what you're getting on the piece of hardware as opposed to flip chips which sort of say oh this is a bit more progressive or this is a bit more linear and it kind of changes this by a bit. It says it on the tin, which is going to be great for these racers as they chase particular setups for maybe different venues, different tracks. Throw that in with the geometry adjustment on the headset, which lets you change reach and head angle. You can have a bike that is good for a lot of different racetracks. Now behind me, we have Nico Malali's Frameworks bike. And this project, I think is pretty interesting and it's got a lot of people talking. So Nico has been incredibly transparent in designing the bike and developing it and all his testing and methodology, which I think is really, really cool. Talking to him though, he was saying that he doesn't necessarily have a direct intention to ever sell the bike. He might do if it lets him further the process and further the racing, but so far he's just doing it as a passion project, which I think is really, really cool. He did say though that although they've kind of settled on many of the design aspects, one of the things they didn't anticipate is actually 
the fatigue they're seeing in the frame. So they've got another generation, the fourth one, to build the parts onto after this race, which should have reinforced gussets to hopefully let it stand the test of time a little bit better. Another thing they've been focusing on is getting the right amount of flex and comfort from the rear end. Now they're playing with this by actually having ridges that sit on the internal side of that rocker link. Now, as you can imagine, if you had a piece of paper, and it's gonna be relatively flexible. However, if you put a crease in it, it's suddenly gonna stiffen it. So that's what they're doing here, or at least something along those lines. So having flex that you can fine tune could be a really good thing for riders that either push their bikes particularly hard, ride in varied terrain, or just want something that fits them better. Said giant 17 times. Need to get out of that cul-de-sac, it's a dead end. Giant hole. <laughs> Got my giant foot in my giant <laughs> mouth. <laughs> now behind us, we have the giant factory team and they have their new glory, or at least the bike that will replace the glory. Now this bike is really important for a few reasons. First of all, giant, name aside, is obviously a massive company. And it's a bit of a shot in the arm for downhill bikes to see such an industry titan still making them and developing them. And also it's important because we've seen Giant go down this road before. I think it was about 2019, they had a prototype 29er that never really saw production. It seems to just go to a bit of a dead end. This, however, looks very close to production. We've seen some spy shots along the way and it was actually being raced last weekend in the BDS. Now to look at this bike, the Maestro Link looks a little bit different compared to their other models. And it seems to be, how to put this, packaged very compactly, especially around that lower link. Now, this is pure speculation on my part, but I do remember there was some legal wrangling between the DW Link and what was Maestro. And I wonder if in some ways, having to keep to within their own patent sort of was a bit of a design headache. But either way, they seem to have done it. It's a Maestro Glory with 29 inch wheels. Now, something I really do like about this bike that I was able to spot was that the fact that it uses flip chips for the rear brake adapter. Now that means that when you change the chainstay length using a flip chip on the axle, you don't have to then run a second brake adapter and swap it out. You can run the same one and it can just slide in relation to that axle, which makes complete sense to me. And I think they've done a really nice job of it. Now it's shrouded in secrecy at the moment, and this is about as close as we can get, but hopefully it should break cover pretty soon. Cause like I said, it looks like the finished article. But anyway, that's it from me. Hopefully the weather holds out. It was meant to be raining today, but it's not. The midges are definitely present, but we'll have to wait and see how we go this weekend. At least we'll hope for a dry race. Thanks guys. And we'll see you next time. So we're here with the pivot sliders. Talk of the town. Talk of the town. How, how, talk us through them, Bernie. How do they go? I wanted something that was like kind of different. I wanted a Birkenstock, but I'm not really a Birkenstock guy. I wanted a thick thing, but I didn't want a big Nike Puma Adidas. So any slider you buy has a huge logo on. Mm -hmm. But pivot through these patches. So we've got them on these sliders. And I've tried two different super glues. On the right, we've got a fast setting one that bleeds through, unfortunately, but it sets instantly. On the left, well, like my left, this one, you have to hold the patch for five to 10 minutes, but the glue doesn't breathe, bleed through, so it looks pretty good. Well, thank you very much, Bernard. Bernard, who is unbelievably from Surrey, I would never have guessed it, <laughs> with his sliders. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm 